Okay, good morning. This is headlines from the Drudge Report and other various locations on Valentine's Day, February 14th, 2018. All right, let's check somehow here. So we got inflation surge. So basically, <clears throat> consumer prices jump much more than forecasts, sparking inflation fears. Consumer price index, a key indicator of inflation trends, jumped 0.5% in January, well above market expectations. Ooh, 0.5%. Trying to scare us. Markets reacted sharply to the news with stocks sliding and government bond yields rising. So the Fed is watching inflation closely, so the report could add fuel to these uh, rate hikes. So basically, um, we know the economy is starting to boom again with Trump. The stock market was going insanely high, and then it's found out a few days back, a whistleblower came out and said, yes, there are the, basically the big banks, the big investors of the stock market are purposely swinging the stock market uh, down to try to crash it, or at least scare everyone into a short, quick sale. And then what happens? They swoop in and buy up everything, just like they, uh, just like it happened way back in the first stock market crash in U.S. history, as well as um, happened in England with the Rothschilds, um, and that's how they were able to buy up all the shares of the uh, the bank and basically own everything. They scared everyone with uh, false news with the war down there. <clears throat> Let's check out a different one. Okay. So, backlash Sean White drags the American flag after a gold medal win. Now, yeah, yeah, he shouldn't have done that, but he's tired, he's jazzed up. Um, just won another gold. I mean, he's the most winning snowboard gold medalist in history. Well, yeah, he's only been around for a little while. Um, Chloe Mania, Chloe Kim. Um, everyone loves her. She's a great, funky American teen. Um, with sweet blonde hair. Likes burgers and fries. You know, Ben and Jerry's ice cream. Total badass. She would have won, or she, she they, they think she would have won gold back when she was 13, but she was two years too young to compete in the Olympics. But she's already won tons of uh, uh, X Games with her snowboard. And, yeah, so what those people are, those people are Olympians. I'm going to go to something here uh, over on Breitbart. Now, this is Olympic skater Adam Rippon, or as I like to call, Adam Tampon. I don't want to be, uh, I'm sorry, he's quoted as saying, I don't want my Olympic experience to be about Mike Pence. Despite taking shots at Mike Pence over his LGBT views, gay United States Olympic skater Adam Rippon said at a press conference in Pyeongchang, South Korea, that he did not want his Olympic experience to be about the vice president. What? Maybe you shouldn't have started it, you little twerp. I have no problem talking about what I said because I stand by it. But I think right now the Olympics are about Olympic competition and the athletes involved. Rapon said his tampon said his comments about Pence have resulted in extra tension to his speech. I don't want to distract from their experience. And I don't want my Olympic experience to be about Mike Pence, even though I started the whole damn thing. Yeah, dude, seriously, what I wanted you to be was... So yeah, if you didn't want the experience to be about Mike Pence, maybe you shouldn't have brought up all that stuff. Stop acting like a little bitch. You know, when you're there, you're supposed to be an Olympian. An Olympian, it doesn't matter. It's about the sport. It's about your the athleticism. 
No, you're too busy proudly screaming about, you know, and, and I'm being hyperbolistic here, about how much cock you want to suck and how much you take it up the ass instead of actually concentrating on being a fantastic skater. Go win the gold. Do better at skating. Stop acting like a like drama queen twerp about this shit, Adam Tamhan. You know, it, 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 you should put more effort into being a better figure skater than your identity as a gay man. So, just like Tyler Durden says, you aren't your fucking khakis. You're, you're, it, it's not about your gayness, buddy. Stop wearing lipstick. You know? Concentrate on the actual art and the athleticism you bring. You're there to be an Olympian. You're not there to be gay. All right? You know, maybe if you would have done a better job of doing that, you wouldn't have been, uh, maybe you would have won some more gold like Sean White and Chloe Kim. Hmm? All right, Romney's ready to jump back in. Republicans are finally popping in polls. Let's see, where's some other shit happening? Oh, yes, FBI, CIA, NSA uh, are saying don't use Chinese-made smartphones. Yeah, no duh. Don't use anything Chinese-made, whether it's microchips or cheap keyboards or mice. All that stuff, is they gather, they, they, they write in uh, malware in there to steal your credit card data, to steal your passwords. They hijack that stuff. Use your computer processing for either Bitcoin mining or they steal your credit cards, um, all sorts of that stuff. So, you know, that's, that's you know, don't trust it, guys. Okay, Mexican nationalist presidential race, uh, rising and rising. Um, so, yeah, go ahead. Uh, make Mexico great again. Make Mexico a place that Hispanics will want to go to. And not have to worry about getting shot, murdered, or forcing to become drug mules. Uh, teacher alleges, alleges hashtag me too sex harassment by her students. Well, you know, I don't know what to say about that. Uh, obviously, the teacher should be teaching. The students should be learning. Maybe she's too much of a distraction. I actually saw her. She's not horrible looking. She does got a snoz on her, though. Schnoz. Um, a missing skier was found 2,800 miles away, confused and wearing green skin gear. Uh, songbirds have brains specifically designed to find mates for life. Oh, here's a good one. NASA to investigate a 10,000-year-old rock that shows paintings of UFOs. This one's pretty cool. This is from the Daily Star. number of prehistoric drawings have sparked local government to seek help of NASA after images appeared to detect, to detect extraterrestrial life. Sorry, these pop-ups are getting annoying. Okay, so those are the paintings there. The footage, a narrator explains how a number of art pieces have been revealed. Discovered in Charama, India, the images appears to show aliens and UFOs similar to scenes of a sci-fi movie. According to local archaeologist J.R. Uh, Bagat, it is unclear as to what the images reveal. He said, The findings suggest that humans in prehistoric times have seen or imagined things from other planets which still create curiosity among people and researchers. Extensive research is needed for further findings. Charama presently doesn't have any such expert who could give clarity on the subject. He also revealed that some of the features of the paintings were unclear and the characters appeared to be wielding weapons, he added. The paintings are done in natural colors that have hardly faded despite the years. The strangely carved figures are seen holding weapon-like objects and do not have clear features. Specifically, the nose and mouth are missing. 
In a few pictures, they're even shown wearing spacesuits. We can't fully refute the possibility of imagination by prehistoric men, but humans usually fancy such things. The video was uploaded to the YouTube channel, The Lost History Channel, on Sunday, and has already received more than 7,000 views. One comment read, Evidence is everywhere. We need opened eyes. That's all. Another claimed, We don't need to find aliens. They are already here all around us. Archaeologists have contacted NASA and ISRO to help solve the mystery. Now, I did see something somewhere in here before where they mentioned the biblical flood. Edit it, take it out. That's weird. Okay. Um, let's go back. Center column here, right back at the top. One person wounded and shooting at the NSA. So a guy pulled up with his SUV and just, I don't know, started shooting at a security guard. Not, not much else is known. Uh, Pelicano from prison set for release. Hollywood quaking that I'm going to expose things. The Pelicano guy. People got away with a lot because of me. Oh, sounds interesting. This weekend, how many box office records will the Black Panther break? And New York Times investigates if white children can wear superhero mask. Let's check that one out, huh? I just pulled it up here before. A little sneak peek at some of those others I'll be reading real quick. And uh, New York Times investigates if white children can wear Black Panther mask. Quote, this could be perceived as an unwitting form of cultural appropriation, author writes. Is written by Adon Salazar over at InfoWars. Many parents are split on how Black Panther's blackness should figure into their child's children's relationship to the character. The fuck? So saith the New York Times. The failing but widely circulated newspaper claims Marvel's Black Panther set to hit theaters this week is dividing parents, not of color, on whether it's appropriate for their children to dress up as the superhero T'Challa, a.k.a. Black Panther. You know, so it's white liberals talking about how their kid can't wear a black superhero costume. You know, if you just take out liberals and it's just, if, uh, white white people are saying that their kid can't wear the Black Panther costume. You know, do you know how crazy that sounds? With the KKK and all that racism stuff that they love to revel and drudge up. It, it's 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 the utmost in I don't know reverse racism, I guess. The failing. But widely circulated newspaper claims Marvel's Black Panther is set to hit theaters this week is dividing parents, not of color, whether it's appropriate for their children to dress up as the superhero T'Challa, a.k.a. Black Panther. Who's allowed to wear a Black Panther mask? There's a little uh, illustration of a blonde-haired, blue-eyed kid dressed up in Black Can Panther stuff. And with his, with his white blonde mommy buying it for him, and then the little black child is also wearing Black Panther shirt, and he's all looking sad, and his mama's wearing all the Buntu um, uh, patterns. In an article initially titled, Who's Allowed to Wear the Black Panther Mask? The Times explored if white children wearing the fictional characters, remember, fictional characters, costume, at worst could be perceived as an unwitting form of cultural appropriation. That means stealing from other cultures and making it your own. The article was later inexplicably retitled The Many Meanings of Black Panther's Mask. For fortunately, media figures and parents interviewed for the piece disagreed white children should be excluded from wearing the costume. However, the Times' race-bait attempts are transparent. 
When I look at it, I see no reason why a kid who's not black can't dress like a Black Panther. Can't dress like Black Panther. Vimeo Human Resources Director Katrina Jones told the Times, Just like our kids who dress, who's not white dress up like Captain America. I think it's a beautiful thing about comics as they do transcend race in a lot of ways. Another parent admitted it was necessary for a white kid to be open and judge based on character story and personality of history. Even Black Panther star Chadwick Boseman claimed he's thrilled at the prospect of children black and white. What about all those other ones? Brown, yellow, red, dressing up as a little character. He says it represents a crossover. Even though blacks are only 10 to 13% of the, the country here in the U.S. Meanwhile, website io9 senior editor Evan Narcisse said it's difficult to talk about the superhero to his seventh daughter without delving into racism, but agreed. You want that white kid to be able to think that he can dress up as Black Panther in a costume? Because to that kid, there's no difference between Captain America and Black Panther. Right. Both are great superheroes from their country. Uh, here's a uh, New York Times Styles uh, section from Twitter. As children glom onto hashtag Black Panther, their parents wonder how best to talk to them about race or racism and cultural appropriation. No, 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 no. You're making shit up. One expert interviewed, however, claimed white people shouldn't ignore the element of race because they have privilege. White people have privilege, not constantly being reminded of their race in the United States. Oh, oh, I beg to differ. Where white is the majority, whereas black person, you don't. Texas Woman University Associate Professor Bridget Vitrup told the Times. Oh, I got another, I got another article talking about, uh, of their race here in the United States, being reminded about it all the time. In the end, sanity almost appears to prevail as the author timidly admits to wear the Black Panther mask isn't quite the same as wearing blackface. You think? Don't tell the times, but white children are modeling Black Panther costumes over at Walmart.com. Oh, the humanity. Love the little uh, sense of humor that Don wrote in there. So let's touch upon that last part there. Star Telegram. Homework assignment for a Texas girl, draw yourself as a slave. Oh, yes, that's right. We even have a picture of it, of the homework assignment. It says, making sense with the senses. Our discussion, think of our discussions about slave life in Texas in the 1850s. Then do the following things below. Draw, your, draw a picture of yourself as a slave. That's 10 points. Color the picture, 10 points. Write one sentence that describes your surrounding using each of the five senses. In all, you should have five, sentence, five sentences, which is 50 points. Neatness and creativity also include spelling, punctuation, blah, 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 blah. A mother near Austin was outraged by her 12-year-old daughter's homework assignment. Draw yourself as a slave, then color and write a visual, visualization of what you see around you. An Austin TV station reported the incident on a Saturday and spoke with the girl's mother, identified as Tanya Jennings. She told the station that she was shocked when her daughter pulled the single-page assignment out of her backpack at home. There's nothing about slavery that I would want any child, regardless of color, to have to relive, said Jennings. Good point. Twelve-year-old reportedly attends Four Points Middle School, part of the Leander School District near Austin. The assignment was part of a Texas history lesson regarding the Civil War, the role slavery played in the war, according to uh, Leander School District. The school district sent out a statement to the media in Austin on its investigation of the incident, saying the campus quickly responded to the parent to hear his concerns and discuss the situation. Uh, her name is Tanya Jennings. I don't think that's a parent. That, that's a male name. But I don't want to assume his gender. When teaching sensitive content, we strive to deliver lessons with care and context to our students. The school district added that while the tragic impacts of slavery in Texas and the United States have been documented, Texas Education Agency Curriculum for 7th Grade History expects students to explain reasons for Texas' involvement in the Civil War, including states' rights, save slavery, 
sectionalism, and tariffs. The assignment was ostensibly an attempt to fill, fulfill that expectation. Now, part of me is like, I don't know. Uh, the parent does have a point about, you know, want to relive slavery, but, you know, then we're moving into the whole trigger warning stuff and life being too sanitary to know what we're talking about there. Less than 2%. In the whole life of the United States, less than 2% of the people owned slaves. And there are more slaves in Africa right now than ever collectively existed in the United States since the founding and even before the founding. So, you know, this slave stuff, we need to... Okay, and this is from The Guardian. Chemicals in the packaging of carpets and nonstick pants may contribute to obesity. Studies have also linked compounds called perfluoroalkyls, substances to cancer, higher cholesterol, and immune problems. Sounds like a really weird name, perfluoroalkyl. So, yep, the per, and then fluoro, that's fluoride or fluorine, and then alkyl, which, well, that's like alkaline, but I think it's funny that it's all kill. Anyway, this is from Ian Sample, science editor. Chemicals used to make nonstick pots and pans, stain-resistant carpets, and food packaging may contribute to high levels of obesity by disrupting the body's ability to burn calories, scientists say. Researchers at Harvard University examined the effects of compounds called perfluoroalkyl substances, or PFASs, which have already raised concerns among some health experts after animal experiments and other studies linked, to, linked them to cancer, high cholesterol, and immune problems. In the latest work, Yi Sun, a nutritionist who specializes in the risk factors for diabetes, city, uh, for diabetes obesity, and cardiovascular disease, Analyzed records for 621 overweight and obese people who spent six months dieting. All were part of a clinical trial run in the 2000s to test the effectiveness of different types of diets. As expected, those on the trial lost weight, on average 6.4 kilograms over six months of the diet, and then regained nearly half of that in the following 18 months. But Sun found that those who gained the most weight after dieting had the highest blood levels of PFSAs, or PFASs, sorry, that's my dyslexia there, with the effects more pronounced in women. According to a report in the Journal of Floss Medicine, women in the study with the highest F PFASs levels regained about 2 kilograms more than those with the lowest PFAS levels. The scientists went on to show that those with the high levels of PFASs in the blood also burned calories more slowly than the rest, as measured by their resting metabolic rate. These chemicals may lead to more rapid weight gain after dieting, Sun told the Guardian. It's very hard to avoid exposure to PFAS, but we should try to. It's an increasing public health issue. Figures compiled by European food safety authorities suggest that exposure to certain types of PFASs in Europe are far below the tolerable daily intake, or TDI. The amount of chemical deemed to be safe to consume over human lifetime. For one compound, perfluoroctane sulfonate, the typical adult consumed less than 3.5% of the TDI, or tolerable daily intake. Alan Bubis, or Boobies, Professor of Toxicology at Imperial College London said that while the findings were intriguing, it was impossible to know whether perfluoroalkyl compounds were responsible for the weight gain seen in the study. As the author points out, there is a potential that at least some of the findings are due to chance. The findings can serve as a good basis for further focused investigations into a possible link between exposures to PFASs and weight management. They, I think they also did something out of this. Maybe it was more speculation that they decided. 
check it out. Okay. And will this be the last one? I think this will be the last one for today. Oh, this is from The Hollywood Reporter. Jimmy Kimmel targeted by street artist over Sunset Boulevard car wreck. What? I don't recall hearing about this in the news. And Sabo hung a phony street sign at the spot where a talk show host crashed his BMW. Jimmy Kimmel found himself the butt of the joke Tuesday morning at the location where, a few weeks earlier, he reportedly crashed his BMW while trying to make an illegal left turn. Yeah, when going left, it's usually illegal. Um, joke guy. So, I'm showing the picture here. Stop. Right turn only. And, looks like he, uh, break-handed. This includes idiot comedians with a stencil. That's great. TMZ reported that Kimmel was struck while driving on the Sunset Strip in front of the famed Chateau Marmont Hotel in West Hollywood as he turned left. See, that's his problem. He's too used to going left all the time. A nearby street sign proclaimed, right turn only, which was situated underneath a red stop sign. On Tuesday, though, an additional, very official looking street sign was added to the post so that underneath right turn only, drivers also are reading, this includes idiot comedians. The Hollywood Reporter has learned that the phony traffic sign is the work of Sabo, a conservative street artist who often lampoons liberal entertainers. Sabo said he's picking on Kimmel because of a recent comment he made on a podcast. Quote, pretty much every late night talk show host is a liberal, and that's because it requires a measure of intelligence. <laughs> Kimmel quipped a week ago on Pod Save America. Obviously, his intellect wasn't so sharp as to keep him from nearly killing someone, Sabo told The Hollywood Reporter. It is, in fact, the second time in four months Sabo has targeted Kimmel with his street art. In October, he plastered several bus stop benches, faux ads, calling him a crybaby and referring to his show as the Estrogen Hour. God, those were great. In that incident, Kimmel responded by having someone snap his picture while sitting on one of the benches, giving Sabo the finger, then sending the photo to the Hollywood Reporter. Kimmel, though, was unavailable Tuesday to comment on his latest attack from Sabo. Oh, uh, that's lovely. Right there. All right, folks, that'll do it. Time to sign off. As usual, if you enjoyed this, uh, please subscribe. Give it a thumbs up. Um, again, this really is just me having a few minutes to read through some of the headlines so people could, you know, do the three S's in the morning or three S's at night and just chill and, you know, listen for about 20 minutes so you can get some news that you won't normally hear on the radio or on the TV. Uh, have a great one, uh, and happy Valentine's Day.